What's up everybody, it's Sparrowwood again here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with something a little different. We're going with the Rift Worm. Now, this is a really interesting ship for, well, obvious reasons, because it's not really a ship. Um, so, yeah. I, I, there are a couple things I want to note. This is a blueprint, and as such, there are a couple of settings that I have on my... Uh, space World for the Inspiration series that I have set up, kind of as a pre-done template. Note, most notably being that the damage and stuff has been turned off, so I don't know exactly how stable this would be with the damage turned on. The description did not list anything about, like, with it on, you know, it's gonna blow up or something, but it did say that there's around 200 rotors and that we've been warmed. So, with that, uh, yeah, so basically it's a giant, giant worm. Now, <clears throat> each inside the mouth here is actually a really neat idea. So you've got the teeth, but then inside the mouth you've got grinders. So you could actually make it look like um, something was eating a ship or something, and it would actually be destroying it, which I thought was a really cool thing. Um, inside the rings here... I don't know if I can fit through here or not. I can! Hooray! So, actually, it's survival ready, which is interesting to me. I don't know if there's assemblers and all that kind of stuff, but you can clearly see there's cargo containers, um, reactors, a lot of reactors, though. For this being survival ready, it would require a lot of uranium, I imagine, to power all these thrusters and everything. Uh, the one thing I'm not seeing is where the rotors are. So, we have a rotor head here, which... I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea how that works, or how that's even done. But that's an interesting little trick. Um, so there's the primary rotor, it looks like, that's actually connected to a rotor base. And then there's another one down here. Why there's just heads here? That's a little mysterious to me. I don't really know how that works. I imagine it's some kind of workaround to get this to function correctly without using any kind of hack stuff, but I don't really know how you do that, or how the game interprets that. So, these aren't really stairs, but they kind of looked like it to me, so I went this way, but uh, this is the main uh, flight seat. Does not appear like we have any gravity. Um, I don't believe there's any interior, it's basically just the... Um, it's basically just the, the worm. Um, so we have the jaw and we have grinders. I think everything else is handled on its own. And I noticed that their dampeners are set to off by default. So we're not going to probably mess with that too much because I don't want to break anything. There is a camera, however, up top here. You can kind of see it. Um, let's see if I can... There it is. So, up here, for anybody that basically doesn't want to rely on the third-person camera to see from the outside, otherwise you're limited to the mouth, or the maw view. Um, note to self, I do this all the time, do not hold alt for your view and try to tab to turn off your HUD. You switch out of the program. So. So yeah, so let's actually see how this flies. I am going to turn this back on. Uh, why is it... That's weird. It's like highlighting the... Oh, the grinders, is that why? Weird. They're detecting some kind of slope, I guess? I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Weird. Okay, sure. Um, I am going to leave the HUD on, though, so we can check speeds and things. I do think that's kind of cool. With the dampeners off, it actually has a little bit, like, it's a uh, little bit of a slinky effect on its on the actual little rings, which is kind of cool. See, all of that banging around makes me wonder if, if you had... Um, if you had the damage on, would it be breaking? It's kind of my thing, and I don't know the answer to that. But it looks really crazy and cool. 
I just love when people come up with these really weird and different ways. Like, it's this is not a typical spaceship. <laughs> so I just think it's kind of cool. Um, as for the maw, let's check this out. So we hit the jaw button. As you can see, it lowers. Um, obviously, it'll retract too. And then we can turn or switch to the grinders, I guess. I'm afraid that's going to grind out the window because it's highlighting it. Now, is that working the top ones? Yep, it is. Okay. So, yeah, this basically is working like your weapons. You would just highlight it and then um, hold down the button when you wanted to eat something. And then you hit your button again. And it goes back. Now, I'm going to try something really interesting and see what happens. I'm kind of thinking this was done on purpose, but I'm going to turn the dampeners on and see if we just kind of wreck... Yeah, we kind of collide into each other kind of thing. So that's probably why the dampeners are set to off, is so that doesn't happen. It's kind of like that uh, old school like Bugs Bunny style cartoon that when somebody stops, everybody runs into them kind of thing. But yeah, overall, I just thought it was something really, really different and unique. Um, so I wanted to show it off. So I think that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so next up we have the Bravo 037 station. This one's actually pretty cool looking to me. Um, I, there's a lot of detail work done to it, especially for being a vanilla build. Um, it is a role-playing themed station, so the idea uh, from the description that I got is that basically this is a one side of a basically like a hyperspace gate type thing for ships that can't do their own jump drives or can't afford to or whatever. You can fly through the gate and it warps you to the other station, I guess. That's kind of my interpretation of it. Let me know what you guys think. Um, but there's a lot of detail work done that I think is really, really cool. Uh, I say it's a vanilla build. I believe it is because there was no mods listed, but it is a world file, which means it doesn't necessarily have to list the mods. Um, it would just download them automatically, though I don't recall seeing any download stuff. So let me know uh, what you guys think about that. But I'm pretty sure, I'm about 95% sure it's a vanilla build, which is very impressive. Um, even this gate structure and everything, there's just a lot to see here if you're looking for ways to make vanilla uh, a bit more detailed. I would encourage you to go through this build, at least the exterior from what I'm seeing, um, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of with a fine tooth comb because there's a lot of little things like this. I really like this. Um, they put a catwalk over one of the panels, or possibly all of them. Oh no, they put a... Uh, a window over here but using the uh, ramp bases to kind of create this little frame and stuff like that I think that's a really 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 cool touch I don't know why I like that so much <clears throat> sorry but I really do uh, and then there's these little fighter ships here there's a small looks like a cargo hauler so yeah I really am a big fan of how they have this set up um, this I'm a little curious about. Let me grab a welder. I forgot this was a world. Most of mine are already set up with a welder tool. Okay, now this is interesting. So this is obviously a non-functional um, tube. It's not actually going to work because it's not a conveyor. Uh, but for design-wise, it's an incomplete oxygen tank. Which is a really interesting way to make a pipe look. So that's kind of a neat... Uh, neat way to do it. You can actually see the fully developed ones there, but and truth be told since hydrogen is created from an oxygen generator when you put ice into it That's actually not a bad setup is using oxygen tanks to connect hydrogen tanks like actually like down here fully develop them uh, That's kind of an efficient way to connect them up I would imagine rather than using just conveyors, so I may even adapt that into my own worlds um but yeah, I'm just very impressed with the um, little things, like having these like railing type things with lights on them out of the blast door blocks, or the variants in the colors and stuff like that. Like, there's just a lot of little detail work done um, that it really surprises me that this is vanilla, to be honest, because usually you don't get that level of detail. It does kind of show that just because you're playing in vanilla without mods doesn't mean you can't have a detailed build. 
Um, obviously, interiors are more difficult to do than exteriors with just vanilla blocks, but it's still kind of an example that it can be done. Um, but yeah, so we're in the interior part here. Now, I don't know too much. The description was fairly simple. Um, it, it did describe there was some cargo areas and, and a refueling spot for uh, uh, docked ships and things like that. So there is that. But as far as the layout and all that kind of stuff, I don't I don't really know what we're looking at. This is another airlock. I know because you spawn into the world in this area right here. So that's how I got out. Uh, this I don't know. It's kind of like a lobby thing, I guess. Cargo room. I'm not really sure what this is, to be perfectly honest. Um, I'm trying to keep my headlights off as well just so you guys can kind of see what it's supposed to look like if we get into too dark of a spot i'll turn them on um this looks like some kind of possibly observation or docking oh because this is the the heart the hauler so this is probably like a um a f uh, docking observation area to guide you in uh, there's programmable blocks everywhere. I didn't hear anything in the description. I didn't hear any. I didn't see anything in the description um, about using any scripts or anything like that. So I'm imagining a lot of these programmable blocks are just for show. Uh, this looks like some kind of bunk area, or I don't know, place for somebody to crash. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I would say the only thing if there actually are. Um, specifically laid out areas kind of thing. Uh, the the disconnect of this walkway versus the siding of regular blocks is a good way to show you where the path is kind of thing. So you can kind of tell where you're going. Uh, but as for where you are once you get there, um, it might benefit from some signs, possibly. Though, I'll admit, with all these different angles and slopes, I don't know where you would put them. Uh, because you can't attach signs, really. I mean, you could put one over there and it would overlap the corner, but who wants to do that? Um, so we've got a couple displays here. This is probably another... Looks like a... Oh, this is probably ring control. Okay. This is probably the control for the hyper hyperdrive ring, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and this is that underside glass walkway thing we saw earlier when we were flying around on the outside, and I, I swooped under and took a look at the bottom. Um, I gotta tell you, though, I don't mind the idea of the, of the mag boots for no gravity, but it has got to figure out how to handle slopes better. So we've got a small connecting point here for probably drones, fighters, whatever. Because, like, this kind of stuff's fine. You go up slope, whoomp. It's just very jarring when you're doing it with mag boots. Um, maybe? Okay. It's so interesting in this game how some things you can climb up no problem, and then other things it's like, nope, I can't take a... I can't take a bigger step over that obstacle. Um, so I think we inadvertently already checked out the lower area. I didn't... Well, I guess we didn't go this way, did we? Yes, I think we did. This is where the way we came in from this time, I believe. I say this time because, when, like I said, when I first started up the world, I went out the other door. So, um, the interior is a little more sparse. It's not really, like, a bad thing, but compared to the outside, I think the outside is far more detailed in terms of just the architecture and stuff like that. Um, but... Yeah, overall, I love the look of this thing. Especially this outer ring area. There's a lot of just that kind of clutter design that went into it, which is really, really cool, and I'm sure it takes a lot of time to do stuff like this. Um, but yeah, I really thought it was cool. So I think that's going to do it for this one. Let's move on to the last one. Okay, and last but not least, we have the Vacation Cottage. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why? What's so cool about it? Trust me, this thing is really, really cool looking. Um, there's, there is some mods. It is a world file, uh, so you don't have to worry about what 
mods are incorporated, but uh, it's got some really, really detailed design work that's not normally done, um, because usually we're not typically building structures like this. You're usually building crazy bases and things like that. Uh, full disclosure, though, there is one aspect to this particular part of the episode. I'm not sure how it's going to go, and that is I had to close the game, like force close, uh, space engineers, it got hung up while trying to load this at one point, and when I reloaded it, it loaded much faster, like it worked fine. However, it seems to have reset like 90% of my settings and controls and stuff, so if anything now sounds weird, or if I have something pop up that normally doesn't, it, it's probably because that's so, don't pay it too much attention. Uh, but yeah, so overall, is a really neat idea. Now, I can see one thing here that tells me this is a small grid on top of a large grid is this gap, which means that at some point it's probably attached to a rotor somewhere. Um, but yeah, overall, the, the actual aesthetic design and stuff is crazy cool in terms of the level of detail like these. The stair work, these little counters, this wall thing, a lot of it is just really, really neat. Um, I could probably find quite a bit that's done in a unique building style on this build, to be honest. So I know it's not a typical, like, spaceship or even a typical base, um, but overall, I'm very impressed with this. Kind of like this stuff, I don't know how long this took, but I imagine it was a long time. Uh, but doing the flooring, this pseudo wood floor, by doing the slight color variations and stuff is really cool. Really neat idea. Um, what do we got here? We've got loft lights. Oh, there's one example. Um, what's the, what's the standard interact button? I guess it's F. So, yeah, that got changed, apparently. Garage lights. Oh, garage door. Oh, it actually works. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Well, that's cool. So the garage door actually works. I'm guessing this is the lights as well. Garage lights. Uh, there are batteries as backups. It is powered predominantly by solar panels. And we've got a light there. Very cool, very cool. Um, an interesting thing that I find a little odd is with all of this detail work, all the stone fireplace, the fireplaces, the couches, all this kind of stuff, I am a little surprised that there's no doors. Um, seems kind of like something that either through mods or just, I don't know, it just seems like an odd, th I'm sure there's a reason behind it, it just seems kind of like an odd absence. Um, covered porch lights, oh, okay. And I really do like these columns here, actually. Uh, this pillar structure thing. This is really, really cool looking. Um, I don't know. I know most of the mods are some, are like blocks and stuff. Um, half slope lighter. Those actually, I think, are vanilla now. The half, the half blocks, I think. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure how some of this was actually made and how much of this you'd actually need the mods for. Um, I looked on the panel, or on the save file since I had to reload the save, and there are a few. There's not a lot, though. I mean, it's, it's a handful. And I think they're mostly armor mods and, like, ramp mods and stuff like that, but I'm not sure how many of them were just, like, removing edges and stuff. Uh, so we have this cool... Um, little din dinette table here with a kitchen. It's a very thorough kitchen as well. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking a lot of this is actually just making use of some of the half slopes and stuff though. I don't know how much of this really is super mod dependent. It would actually be interesting to remove all of the mods and reload the file and see what's missing. Um, cuz obviously it'll re it'll still load the file but you'll be missing whatever blocks are no longer there. So we have study lights, which I guess are already on. Looks like all these lights are already on. And this is the porch. We got a nice little brick style. Um, I'm actually very impressed with the color palette and stuff of 
purely doing it with color palette as far as like the bricks and the wood floor and the stone fireplace all of that is still steel blocks it's just different colors um oh no that's cool i have a little interior light up in there uh what are these for stove okay stove light kitchen cabinet light oh those over there ah okay um i do feel a little bit short I don't know if that's a side effect of um, just how it's built and whatnot, uh, but I do kind of feel a little bit on the small side. Uh, like I said, that could just be me. I don't. I don't know if that's just how I'm how I'm thinking. Oh, uh, nice railing system here as well. What is all this stuff? So we got half slope light blocks, which don't actually interact there. Half slopes. Okay, so this part has me curious. Oh, hold up. This is actually, if this is what I think it is, this is actually really cool. That's half slope. I'm trying to, I, there we go. So you have a half slope block there and the other part of the block collider um, is the bottom. So it's not interacting with the rail. And then the next one that it interacts with the rail is either a full block or it's either a full block or it's um, a half that's been rotated. Okay, so that's a full block and then there's, a, oh, I see it now, right there, okay. So that's how they got around. I was, I was trying to figure out because the half slopes still have a full block collider, which is kind of annoying. Um, but so I was curious how they did the rail. So they just left a gap there. Okay, I gotcha. Uh, yeah, okay, moving on. I try, when I'm actually noticing something, I try and actually kind of... What is... I just realized the house is moving, like one little tick at a time. My mouse is sitting perfectly still now, so that's actually the house. Hold on, I have a theory behind this. Um... Oh, crap, that's the interact button. Dang, nabbit, all my controls are wrong now. I don't know what it did. Um, that's not really what I want. I'm thinking the rotor actually has a speed set that this whole frame is built on, possibly. And that's why it's just kind of moving a little at a time. It's kind of weird. Um, so, yeah, we have our loft area up here. That was the nice bathroom now they did say in the description that the um the half or the the spare bedroom is not finished so as you can see here ooh, it's actually a really big closet so I'm, I'm guessing closet kind of like entryway and then bedroom i think would be your spare bedroom there um and then this is the master with a balcony loft type thing very very nice always loved this kind of stuff even in, in like real architecture I love this in houses when you can walk out onto a balcony and look down into a living room like that with a fireplace. Mm. Awesome. So we have a cool master bedroom here. Okay, so here's one of the mods, obviously. Um, so that would not be there without mods. But actually, I think this is a newer one that I believe... Yeah, it's all one... This light part is all part of the bed. Um, and I believe that's a newer mod because I don't remember ever running into that when I was downloading a lot of mods. Uh, and then we have the master bath. Very, very nice. So, yeah, this is actually really cool because I'd, I'd be curious to remove the mods and then actually see... Corner light. Well, that's a small grid. That's I was thinking that might be a mod, but... Um, I'd be curious to see what actually this loses. I know that probably stuff like this, those ramps don't look... Uh, like the vanilla ones, so you would probably lose some of those. But I would be curious because I didn't see a lot of use of uh, of a lot of the of a lot of crazy mods. Like I really think the ramps and stuff like that. So you'd probably have to redesign the roof and things. But there's a lot to this interior um, that's actually just utilizing some of the newer half slope blocks and things like that. That uh, it would be a really really useful t uh, tool, like a learning tool, to go through and actually analyze some of this stuff because it's very inspiring on ways you can go about building 
things. And in truth, that's probably why when I mentioned this feeling a little bit big for the person size, that's probably why. Uh, because you're going around some of these collision block things. So in order to make this shape work, you have to go up three, you can't go up two, etc. and so on. Um, and you end up with a little bit of a bigger size, I would imagine. I'm guessing. Uh, just to get things to work properly. What is all this? So yeah, this is inverted half slope, or half blocks with inverted ramps? Okay. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, overall, I was super impressed with the detail of this build for, although it does utilize mods, it's not crazy mod heavy. Um, and it's also not very noticeable either, as far as the, the mods that are in here. It's not crazy obvious, like there's a bunch of furniture blocks and things, or, oh, okay, I couldn't do that without those. Um, so yeah, overall, I was really impressed with how much they actually did without relying too heavily on the mods and stuff to, to do it. Because usually, I even said it in this episode, usually interiors are pretty tough to do on vanilla and make them actually uh, highly decorative and things. Now, uh, that said, I will say... Oh, I, I didn't even miss the, I even missed the chimneys. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, that said, though, I will say a lot of people have made use of this small grid, large grid rotor trick. Um, and that has helped interior designs a lot since that became a thing. Um, because it actually let people use in uh, small grids for the interior while the outside had the large grid blocks and stuff like that. So it kind of was the best of both worlds. Uh, but on that note, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace!